something to get us through this jury right there. It really was so dreary out there. And unfortunately, Kevin, look, we saw Karen Johnson standing out in what <laughs> looked a, like a monsoon out there. Are we going to see more of that weather here tonight? Yeah, actually, Ashley, you just made me a little hungry there. I was thinking <laughs> you mentioned soup and I was like, that's the perfect <laughs> meal for a day like today, a lousy winter day where it has been raining pretty much from start to finish. And now that the rain's starting to taper off, because that will be the trend through the evening and night, those winds are really beginning to howl out there. Now there's still plenty of rain north of the Ohio River impacting your Tuesday evening commute, so you're still going to have to take it easy. But as you can see, back down along the river, the rain starting to shut off. And in fact, I could actually see from one of our tower cams, believe it or not, a little sun out there trying to poke its way through the clouds. Uh, the rain continues, especially north of the Ohio River. That's where it's heaviest up here along Route 4 between Hamilton and Fairfield out towards Millville on 27 and Forest Park. So watch out Hamilton, New Miami, Seven Mile, another wave of heavy rain coming up 75 now up towards Monroe and Middletown. It's let up temporarily in Springboro and Franklin, but it's coming back. We're getting a little bit of a break now along the river across parts of Claremont and starting to let up some in Brown County, but here's some heavy rainfall on 62 between Hillsboro down in direction of West Union raining pretty good. This is going to scoot its way on over towards the Peebles community. And as I mentioned, the trend is for the rain to decrease over the next several hours, and that's why you're starting to see more breaks across northern Kentucky. But as the rain winds down, the winds are winding up. They're really starting to howl out there this evening. In fact, we are seeing winds gusting to around 40 for a good part of the area, and these strong winds are going to stick with us. In fact, we'll probably have winds gusting to around 40 at times through at least early tomorrow afternoon. As you'll see here on Futurecast, this is going to be a very windy stretch, and the strongest winds will actually come through after we've gone to bed tonight. So probably a good idea to set that Wednesday morning alarm on your phone. Of course, you might want to keep some of your devices charged in case you have any spotty power interruptions around the area overnight tonight and into early tomorrow morning. And you see here still in the morning, very windy. The first half of your Wednesday, it won't be until tomorrow evening. Those winds begin to subside. Now, overall, while we'll keep the chance for some intermittent showers, the rain's going to come to an end. But as the air gets colder overnight, whatever is left will come down in the form of some flurries and or snow showers. I don't think this is a big deal. I'm really not anticipating an accumulation. Maybe someone picks up a dusting, but with temperatures, you know, hovering near freezing. Of course, you'll want to watch any elevated surfaces, but I don't expect widespread difficulties from wintry weather. So here we are back downtown. I was trying to see if we could catch one of those glimpses at the sun. 45 now here in Cincinnati. We were 50, so temperatures are slowly starting to fall. Look at that sustained wind at 25. Temperatures generally in the 40s. Fort Mitchell, Kenwood, Loveland, everyone in the mid 40s right now. We'll drop into the 30s after about 7 o'clock. And then as that air gets colder overnight and we get down to within a couple of degrees of freezing, there could be a flake or two mixing in. But the real story, very windy the rest of the night tonight with gusts to 40 at times. Tomorrow, cloudy, windy, and cold, 35. But with those winds howling, wind chills will likely be in the teens most of the day. So it will be a cold January day. Temperatures won't really budge much tomorrow. Your seven-day forecast, overall, my thinking long-term hasn't changed. We're watching for a second powerhouse system on Friday, just like this one. Rain and wind on Friday, followed by blowing in some cold weather this weekend. And the difference between the coming system on Friday and this one, I think once the cold blows in this weekend, it stays with us. And we're still keeping a close eye on that Monday time frame, Ashley and Cherie, because I still think we've got the threat for an accumulating snow. And if we can get some snow here, well, you see the trend with those temperatures. Still think we could go below zero next week. All right, Kevin, thanks so much. Well, coming up a little